welcome to our presentation on the guinea worm, otherwise known as Drenunculus medensis. Breaking news, by the way. Breaking news. <laughs> okay, so uh, just to start off, um, just so you all clear, this is a water spread disease. So um, it happens is, it's a cycle basically. So once you have the worm, it's basically a worm. And then it's in you, and then it, uh, it, it goes out. We'll talk about that later. But once it, it goes out of you, after it's been in you for about a year, um, it will burn. So um, people affected go into the water, but then unfortunately the worm will explode a bunch of larvae. And then these larvae, um, they form into third stage larvae. And then, a part, and then obviously people drink it, you know, uh, mostly in like unclean countries. This is mostly in Africa. Um, they don't have fresh water supply. So the water fleas are digested, releasing the larvae in the stomach. And here, um, the larvae migrate to the small intestine and penetrate the intestinal wall into the body cavity, where they grow into worms and mate. And then they grow up to three feet long in your body and move through the connective tissue to various areas of the body. And then, um, and then approximately a year later, it forms a painful blister and, and you know, the cycle continues. Whoa, Izzy, that is really, really scary. So the transmission of the disease, so is a parasitic worm that is transmitted through the water. So often these sort of areas of water, bodies of water that, as Izzy said, are unclean. Um, so we need to get these people clean water because lots of them are in unclean areas and they're using, they're drinking the water from there and that's really dangerous and that's how it gets into the body. Um, there is about 3.5 million cases in 1986, but we've done a good job as a global sort of togetherness, and we've got it down to 148 cases in 2013, and these are the countries left. It's Chad, Ethiopia, Mali, and South Sudan. So if you plan on going to these countries, make sure you drink clean and bottled water. Uh, but it does not cause death. Just want to you know, clarify that for any potential tourists. Okay, so some of the symptoms of the, disease, uh, of the, um, of the worm which would normally come out of the foot because it moves down the body and so they're normally released out of, out of the person's foot. And the symptoms can only become apparent after one year and when the worm is removed, people can develop fever, swelling and then a painful blister, which is where the worm is released, which is where they put it into the water and it will burst and the cycle will continue. And um, the wound or the blister caused by the worm can cause a secondary bacterial infection, so just be careful of that. And um, the infection, the infection can make the pain a lot worse from the blister and then the infected person could be unable to function for weeks or up to months and then there can be permanent damage to the joints where the, the worm has moved through if the person has been infected. So. Okay, so treatment is not that not that great. Um, you have to pull the worm out of the blister where it, where it exits and it's not just one simple removal. I mean, it, it can take weeks to remove, so every day, you know, you pull out a, li a little more. Um, usually, uh, what they do is they, they, like, hook it around some sort of, like, stick, and then they use that as a lever to remove it. And um, obviously, it, it's painful, so the only way they can help with that is aspirin and ibuprofen to reduce the swelling, but otherwise, there's no actual medication that kills the worm. And then, uh, however, as well as what Alex said, um, the bacterial infections that can be treated with antibiotics. But um, if um, you are lucky to be in the presence of um, a medical, um, a doctor or somewhere with a facility, you can have it surgically removed. But that, obviously, in South Sudan, it's not that common. 